of my channel know that I review CBS shows often. Well, one in particular, in great detail. The network has a long history of quality programming, great network specials, wonderful dramas and sitcoms, hands down the best daytime TV programming of the Big Four, and the best news magazine show on terrestrial TV with 60 Minutes. But you wouldn't be here if you didn't want to see where things went wrong. And in these cases, they went very, very wrong. So here we go with the top 10 failed shows on CBS. First off, an honorable mention, Family Dog. My fans would never let me live down a list about failed shows on CBS without mentioning this debacle. Although it is the only show on this list to have survived more than three episodes in the United States, that doesn't mean the show wasn't a failure. With Steven Spielberg and Tim Burton as executive producers behind this Brad Bird created series, how could anything go wrong? Well, the series was extremely over budget, featured animation that didn't live up to network standards, and failed to draw an audience large enough to support it. Having said that, the show did spawn a Super Nintendo game and was released on Laserdisc, just in case the show wanted to say it premiered in 1993 without actually saying it premiered in 1993. And now, the main list. Number 10, Daddy's Girls. After the equally failed Dudley Moore 1993 sitcom Dudley, CBS gave the legendary actor another shot with Daddy's Girls, and somehow it ended up having an even shorter life on the network. Despite having an all-star cast including Dudley Moore, Harvey Firestein, Alan Ruck, and Carrie Russell, this show was rochambeaued by critics and wasn't loved by audiences either. While it is arguable that the show's openly gay lead character played by the openly gay actor Harvey Firestein might have been a tough pill to swallow in pre-LN primetime, what isn't arguable is that the show lasted three episodes before disappearing, leaving a sour taste for the twilight of the great Dudley Moore's fabled career. Number 9. Co-Ed Fever Riding the coattails of the wildly successful film Animal House, it was just a matter of principle that a show like Co-Ed Fever was bound to be created shortly thereafter. The premise of the show is exactly what it sounds like. An all-girls college goes co-ed, and hilarity ensues. Oddly enough, while this show only aired one episode in the United States, all six produced episodes did air in Canada, which continues to prove my theory that a television show that even suggests the notion of single people misbehaving in college was too much for American primetime audiences even in the late 1970s. Number 8. The Trouble with Larry Bronson Pinchot needs no introduction as he was fresh off of eight wonderful years of the legendary sitcom Perfect Strangers on ABC. Thus, when CBS gave him the starring role in this show, the series premiered several weeks before the main season as a means of getting a head start. Unfortunately, the show's rather dark background and lack of laughs kept it from becoming a good follow-up for Balky, and it was cancelled after three episodes. Also, why is Pinchot playing a character named Larry? Wasn't his comedic partner on Perfect Strangers also named Larry? That could have been a bit confusing. Number 7. Fish Police. Another animated series where having a phenomenal cast just wasn't enough to justify the means of production. Not even the talents of John Ritter, Ed Asner, Tim Curry, Phil Hartman, Buddy Hackett, and Frank Welker, among countless others, could have saved this series about, well, Fish Police. Although all six episodes were eventually seen in Europe, it drowned after three episodes on CBS in the United States. Number 6. We Are Men Even the drawling power of Tony Shalhoub couldn't save this mess. Loosely branded as a male version of Sex and the City, this show featured the lives of four divorced men living their best lives. Even with several pre-production nightmares which should have been a harbinger of things to come, the show continued to be pushed through to the air. And then, no one wished it ever did. It only lasted two episodes, and it actually affected other shows that aired on the network those nights. More like, we are men, and women watching something else, am I right? Number 5. Viva Laughlin 
Much like Cop Rock on ABC in the 1990s, Viva Laughlin was another failed attempt at turning daily life into a musical, albeit way worse. Unlike shows such as Glee, where the world of high school sort of lends itself to musical life, casino ownership really doesn't have quite the same vibe. Viva Laughlin lasted two episodes in 2007 and is widely considered to be one of the worst TV shows ever made. Number 4. Secret Talents of the Stars In 2008, when a time when networks were scrambling for original programming during the infamous writer's strike that year, this show was presented in a hurry. Secret Talents of the Stars, which featured celebrities stepping out of their comfort zones to show off skills they weren't famous for, was hosted by John O'Hurley. Just like many of the other competition shows that were flooding the airwaves at that time, the show featured three judges, and like many of those shows, served no purpose in determining the winners. The performances were weak, and the show contained mostly filler between those performances, and it was cancelled after only one episode. I discuss this more in depth on my Top 10 Failed Reality Shows of All Time video, also on this channel. You should check that out, and I'll make sure to put the link at the end of this video. Number 3. Public Morals In 1996, the great Stephen Bochco created this police-themed sitcom. Only one episode aired on CBS before it was abruptly ended by the network. The show's content was considered a bit vulgar, which may or may not have been the reason that it didn't attract an audience right away. Having said that, all of the show's episodes seem to have a pretty decent life in the United Kingdom, and it maintains a 6.9 out of 10 on IMDb. Nice, considering Public Morals was cancelled so abruptly. Number 2. You're in the Picture In 1961, Jackie Gleason hosted this game show in which a panel of four celebrities had their heads placed inside of a large picture, and using a process of questions and answers, would decide what the picture is. The show was considered a colossal failure by audiences and critics. One week later, Gleason took the same half hour of television and spent it apologizing for week one. This apology is one of the funniest half hours in TV history and essentially kept Jackie Gleason on the map for years to come. Before I get to number one, I want to announce a special Governor's Award. This is for a show that deserves to be way high up on this list, but so little is actually known about it, there's not that much to say. Who's Who's This attempt at a game show aired for one episode in the formative year of 1951. It was hastily assembled to replace a show called The Goldbergs, no not that one, which was cancelled due to the sponsor pulling out for the show featuring a Hollywood blacklisted actor. Who's Who's was considered to be one of the worst shows ever and was immediately cancelled with viewers wanting the Goldbergs to come back in its place. Due to it happening in a time long before shows were actively archived, it is likely completely missing. As of recording this video in June of 2022, it is still considered to be one of the holy grails of lost media. And the number one most failed show on CBS, which is bound to ruffle a few feathers. God be with me. The Star Wars Holiday Special. Today, this infamous Christmas spectacular has a so bad it's good cult following. Yet, it is still a gross failure on the part of CBS. Annual Christmas and holiday programs, even to this day, are an important tradition in many households during the season. However, the Star Wars Holiday Special never became one of them, only airing once on CBS in 1978. Although it does introduce audiences to the landmark character of Boba Fett and the Wookiee planet of Kashyyyk, it doesn't make up for the rest of the show's utter insanity. David Hofstede, author of What Were They Thinking? The 100 Dumbest Events in Television History, ranked the holiday special at number one, calling it the worst two hours of television ever. Between Mark Hamill's bizarre facial expressions, trippy musical numbers, the fact the entire first scene is spoken in the Wookiee's groaning language without subtitles, and Harvey Korman is good lord what is this nightmare fuel, this special is considered to be 98 minutes of the strangest TV to ever air on prime time. Having said all that, I still watch it every December. 
Happy Life Day, everyone.